Joining me now on set is former California Republican Congressman and former Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. Mr. Speaker, thank you for being here. We played a little bit at the top, but I want to reset a little bit, show you a little bit of um, Kamala Harris's rally today and mm -hmm. ask you about it on the other side. Let's watch. I was elected attorney general of the state of California, and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. And in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. Predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. You said in an interview last night that basically as she campaigns, she gets worse. So I'm curious, are we seeing the high point of a Kamala Harris campaign in your view? That was obviously very well received in Wisconsin on day two, I guess. Look, I'm from California. I've watched her. Uh, when she ran for attorney general and won, she was the weakest of all the Democrats. Republicans, we actually, it took a couple days later to ever decide whether she won or not. When she ran for Senate in California, we have the top two. She ran against Loretta Sanchez, another Democrat, and she had to retool her whole campaign even though the party was behind her. Uh, when she ran for president, she started the strongest. I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest crowds. Huge rally. And then she didn't even make it to Iowa. Now, this is a shorter race, so advantage to her. But I just don't see all the Biden policies she owns. She owns the border and others. And of all the people that they could replace her with, she is the weakest of the Democrats. That's not my words. That's the New York Times of the 10 out there. But so... I think for the Democrats, this is a positive that Biden's not running. You, the bottom was about to fall out in the polling. This brings it back, but I still see her as the underdog, as the ability to win. You suggested the idea here that she owns a lot of the Biden agenda. If you're advising the Trump campaign, how would you suggest they try to get a handle on a, a brand new candidate that they have to run against here? I, I would keep the campaign going exactly as you're going put it on the issues. And she's got to decide, now she's got another advantage. She gets to pick her VP candidate after the Republicans already picked theirs. But I don't think she'll play as well in Pennsylvania as Joe from Scranton did. Um, she's against fracking. This is an energy state. And it really comes down to Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Do you think she changes the map at all? I mean, the, the blue wall states, I agree, that's the math. But does a, a Kamala Harris make North Carolina or Arizona or Georgia potentially more competitive in a way that Joe Biden couldn't? I'll be looking at who she picks for VP. She's close to, to Senator Mark Kelly. So mm -hmm. that would be a um, Western play for, for Arizona and Nevada. Or does she go in and pick Shapiro and going in to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with J.D. Vance in Pennsylvania and Michigan? Or does she go off and try to get um, Pete Buttigieg? I think that's too much of a Biden administration combined to give too many problems. So it'd be interesting which way she picks, but I don't see an advantage to hers. Uh, Arizona, the border is the number one, Nevada. Mm. I, re I really already give Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, I think those are already Trump. I think the real play here is Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. A lot of your former colleagues in the House have really continued to hammer Joe Biden as if he is still the candidate. It's almost like they can't quite quit going after the guy who was at the top of the ticket. Is that strategic? Is that muscle memory? And what do you think we're going to see going forward with the impeachment inquiry into President Biden? How much does the focus politically in this town stay on Joe Biden, and how much do you think it does shift to the nominee of the Democratic I, I think Party. that moves away, especially next week. You probably don't talk about him. People will start thinking about him differently. And the main focus of Joe Biden was what I've talked about for the last year. He's just not the same person. It wasn't till to de the debate till the rest of America saw it. And that's when you started to collapse. But the real difference will be with Kamala is can she sustain? Can she build the team together? She inherits this campaign team, but is it the campaign team she wants? She has to view herself as being somebody new, but she's just part of the Biden team. Now, she's going to get a lot of money. She's going to get more enthusiasm from the Democrats, but will it be enough? And I've always said whoever this race is about is the person who loses. Mm -hmm. It was always about Biden. So she's got to shake that off. Do you think that's off. still true now in this dynamic? That was with two candidates who the whole country was very polarized well, look, on. His number one issue is age, so that's out of it. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't tie that to Trump. He, he may be older than her, but he's physically 
Nancy Pelosi is older than both of them. He's physically able to do it. So that doesn't play in. What it's really will come down to different policies. Now, can she put a coalition together? We watched black mm -hmm. Americans leave the Democratic Party by a high number, up to 22%. Does she bring people back? Hispanics were leaving and getting the majority. The youth was getting there. But the one advantage that Biden had, that Republicans normally had, was the older voter. Now, was that going with Biden based upon his age? Or will, will Kamala lose that? And that, that, the older voter turns out by a higher percentage than the others. That's so right. it, it'll be a different mix. Let me ask you about something we're already starting to hear again, mainly from some of your former House colleagues who have been attacking Harris. They've been calling her a DEI vice president. A lot of people already think that attack line is racist. Are you confident that your party and Donald Trump can stay on the other side of the line and not delve into racially charged or racist attacks on a I, black female I, I candidate. would say two attacks I've heard Republicans give that are totally stupid and dumb to do is the DEI attack, mm. okay? The other attack that I would not do is saying that the president has to resign. Interesting. That would be an advantage for Kamala. Air Force One is very powerful when yeah. it lands somewhere. And you know what? Something will happen between now and the election a hurricane or something else, and she'll be able to present herself as a leader. Or maybe there is some foreign policy. That is a mistake for any leader to go out and say that on the Republican side. This DEI, that seems like a petty. Look, I disagree with DEI, but she is the vice president of the United States. She is the former U.S. senator. These congressmen that are saying it, they're wrong in their own instance. All right. Uh, former Speaker Kevin McCarthy, we got to leave it there. A lot of good insight into this race. Thanks for coming in and joining us. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.